Hello and greetings from Eastern Europe, my name is Cold Bear and today I want to present you a list of games somewhat similar to Elder Scrolls. It's definitely not a list of clones. The main idea is that if you liked Elder Scrolls, Morrowind, Oblivion or Skyrim, you will probably find this list very interesting, because many games share one or more aspects with Elder Scrolls games and many of them are descendants of fantasy genre and share the amazingness of vast open world. Some you can play alone, some will require help of your friends, but in general I promise this list is what you need right now. Let's start with Crimson Desert, a very good looking open world game made in South Korea. Here you will journey through a vast realm fractured by conflict, a cold and callous deserts and breathtaking cities. Game is open world, but it's also MMORPG. Yes, yes, release your anger. I know it's bad, but hold your horses. Game offers story-rich, single-player campaign, teeming with engaging quests based on the exploits of many mercenaries you'll find available to hire. It seems that developers are trying to sit on two chairs at once, or drink from two vodka bottles at the same time. That is a trick only the best could manage to do. So we'll see what the final result will be. Are they really the best? Let's hope they are because game at least from this trailer and no other exists at the time of making this video it looks gorgeous and I would definitely play the single-player campaign they offer and now watch the trailer till the end because it would be a shame of me to cut it off right now especially that the game looks like a witcher but with a Jon Snow instead of Geralt The is full of dangers, whether you're a prince or a peasant. But a man or beast, only the strong will survive. Who cares if we die? How'd the Lowlanders take over an empire? Look at us. Beaten, shamed, and hunted. Makdov! Eli! Can you hear a word I said? He nearly died out there. Makdov, you are our leader. Everwild. Just look at this beautiful game we know nothing about. Only this trailer exists and nobody knows anything concrete yet. I've made a brave choice by adding Everwild to this list, because it might be just a nice cinematic of 2D platformer in the end, or a cutscene of newest Tetris. Well, it's probably not. And hey, it looks amazing, and I'm pretty much sure that nobody will argue with me about that. From what we can see, open world is on the table and probably cooperative mode. Let's just hope that this is not an MMO. Does this look like an MMO to you? Please share your prophecy in the comments. I would also guess that maybe some kind of survival elements will be included. And I also hope that we can ride those nice antelope creatures. Or maybe you can tame that tiger and ride it. It would be a shame if you couldn't. Stay with my channel for more news about this game. of Adelar. 
This is an open world fantasy RPG that can be played in first or third person. Actually, this game reminded me of Morrowind very much. In my opinion, one of the most important thing in the Elder Scrolls universe is that you can actually pick up items and put them into your inventory. If you see roll of cloth, shield, vodka or skooma bottle on the table, you can actually pick it up and you can do the same here. Isles of Adalar is an indie game, so don't expect AAA quality from it. I tried the demo version you can find it on Steam, and in my opinion it was quite good. Well, for now it has many problems, like terrible fish-eyed field of view. You can constantly feel that something is wrong, no matter how you adjust it. If I was a developer, this would be the most important thing to fix. Mostest importantest test. Yeah, also here you have to adjust gamma, because game is very dark and you can't see almost anything in darker areas. But despite of that, keep in mind that here you can brew potions, make your own armor, spells and so on. It's not a shallow game, it has some real deep in it. It sounds wonderful. Mm. Yes, it really does. I have really good hopes that something really cool will hatch and then crawl out from this a bit ugly duckling one day. Damn, that sounded a bit creepy. No worries, game has massive potential and we will have to wait for it. To hatch and crawl out. <laughs> Mountain Blade Bannerlord the second part of the Mountain Blade series brings heavy improvements and modifications to the sandbox structure of the game. In example, the character editor was expanded to let you adjust almost every element of the face and appearance of your hero. Among other improvements, there is greater depth of warrior characters. Each of them has their own history and profession. The game world has a life on its own. The people you meet are busy doing their daily jobs or performing warrior's activities. This is by any means not a new thing in games, but it brings a bit of realism and helps with overall immersion. Game offers a much more expanded management of your lands, as well as an automatic trade system that reflects supply and demand. On top of that, there is a complex crafting system, which allows you to forge your own unique blades, choosing statistics and appearance. Bannerlord will probably be a huge hit, but we waited for so long and the hype is all gone. Like totally gone. You know when the game was first announced? In 2012. You know what happened in 2012? Grumpy Cat was born. He became a star, lived a life full of memes and tuna and even died in that period. And Bannerlord is still in making. Elden Ring the game is a collaborative effort between a game director Hidetaka Miyazaki, known for Dark Souls, and fantasy novelist George Martin, creator of Game of Thrones. Elden Ring will be themed around dark fantasy and have the ability for players to create their own custom characters instead of playing as a fixed protagonist. Developers also considered Elden Ring to be more natural evolution to the Souls series, as the game will be much larger in scale compared to them, featuring an open world with a new gameplay mechanics such as horseback riding and combat. However, unlike many other open world games, Elden Ring will not feature populated towns with many non-playable characters. Instead, the world will have numerous dungeon-like ruins. I'm more than okay with that. Give me those dungeons. Sadly, no gameplay trailer is released yet, but I think this game will definitely be a hit. Towers. It's an open world survival game set on an island that suffered a cataclysm. It once hosted a great civilization, but something changed. Maybe it was magic, maybe it was climate change, and the island stopped being a welcoming home. There was an exodus and it was abandoned. Generations later, the descendants of this civilization have returned to the island intent on rebuilding civilization. But first, the island itself has to be rebuilt. Game, as you can see, is full of original creatures and environments a real treat for an eye. And now it's the time for a few honorable mentions. Gods and Monsters this is a fairy tale action game about a forgotten hero set in an ancient Greece full of mythological creatures and famous Greek gods. It was created by the authors of Assassin's Creed's Odyssey, so it seems to be some hybrid between Assassin's Creed and Breath of the Wild. New World 
This MMO game takes us to a vast open world inspired by the aesthetics and atmosphere of the 17th century South American colonies and the beliefs of people who lived there. Ghost of Tsushima if you like not only the Elder Scrolls, but you are also a fan of Witcher, Sekiro or Nio, you might like Ghost of Tsushima. Game has amazing visuals and rich story. Sadly, Ghost of Tsushima will be available only for PlayStation 4 users. That's it. Thank you for watching, now it's the great time for you to hit that subscribe button and also notification bell. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye.